this meeting. Oh, but why? What cause do you have for worry? Oh, well, after you asking me, can't you imagine the dismay of a girl about to see the punishment that has been prepared for her? Oh, I agree that Harpagon is not the state you should embrace. I can tell from your expression that the young man you spoke to me about is still on your mind. Oh, yes, Susie. I can't deny that. I confess the respectful visits he paid me have impressed me most favorably. Well, have you found out who he is? No. No, I don't know who he is, but I know he's handsome. And if the choice were up to me, I'd choose him over anyone else. His existence makes me hate the husband they want to give me. Oh, heavens, those young fellows are attractive. But most of them are poor as church life. And you would be wise to take an old husband who would leave you a fortune. I realize that this suggestion has some disadvantages, but those won't last forever. <coughs> and it's best to assume somebody to choose a more attractive husband. In order to money, besides. Oh, good heavens, Brazine! It is strange that in order to be happy, we must wish or wait for someone's death. Oh, that's silly, you. You marry him in the condition that he will make you a widow very soon. This should be in the wedding contract. <laughs> oh, here it is in person. Oh, Brazine, what a face! <laughs> Do not be offended, my dear, if I come to you with my spectacles on. I know that your beauty is striking in itself, and that a man needs no spectacles to see it. But with spectacles, one can see the stars. And I maintain herewith that you are a star. That's the most beautiful star in the land of stars. Well, see, what is this? She says not a word and gives no sign of joy at seeing me. Oh, it is a shock of seeing you suddenly. And then girls are always ashamed to show their real feelings at first. You are right. My dear, here's my daughter coming to welcome you. Oh, I'm very late in paying you this visit. You are doing what I should have done. I should have gone to you first. You see how tall she is, but they say bad weeds grow fast. <laughs> what an unpleasant man. What did the young lady say? Oh, she said she admires you very much. You are very kind, my beauty. What a beast! I am grateful for your sentiment. Oh, I can't stand it! And here's my son coming to welcome you as well. Oh, Pussy, what a meeting. This is the man I told you about. Oh, well, this is a marvelous adventure. <laughs> so you are surprised I have such grown-up children. But soon I'll be rid of both of them. Mademoiselle, I must say that this is a very unexpected meeting. My father took me by surprise when just now he told me of his intentions to marry you. I can say the same thing. I wasn't prepared for such an event. It is true that my father could not have made a better choice, and I have great pleasure in seeing you. But I cannot rejoice over the possibility that you may become my stepmother. Such a title is not one that I wish for you. These words might seem rude to some, but I am certain that you will understand them, and that this, where, this marriage is one that I dislike. You will see how it upsets my interests. And if the matter depended on me, this wedding would not take place. What an impertinent compliment to pay her! What a confession! If I answered you, I would say the same thing. If you dislike seeing me your stepmother, I dislike just as much seeing you my stepson. Please believe I'd be upset if I caused you any distress. And if I were not forced by an absolute power, I wouldn't consent to a marriage that grieves you. But she is right. A foolish compliment deserves a foolish answer. My dear, I apologize for my son's impertinence. He's young and foolish, and yet doesn't understand the meaning of his words. I assure you what he said didn't offend me in the least. If he had spoken otherwise, I'd have seen him less. You are very kind to excuse his faults. With time a row of wisdom, you will see the change in his feelings. No, Father, I am unable to change in my feelings. And I earnestly hope that the lady will believe me. You see how ridiculous he is. He gets worse and worse. Do you want me to deceive my own heart? No more of that. Let's change the subject. All right, then. Allow me, Mademoiselle, to speak for my father and tell you that you are the most charming person in all the world, that I can imagine nothing equal to the happiness of pleasing you, that to be your husband is an honor, a joy which I would prefer to the fate of the greatest kings of this earth. There is nothing I would not do to carry out such precious a conquest, and the hardest obstacles I would- Son, not. slow down, please. But father, this is a speech that I'm making in your name. But I have a tongue of my own. I don't need you for an interpreter. Bring some tears here. No, it is better that we set out right now for the fair. My dear, I apologize for not having some refreshments served before you leave. But father, I thought of this, and I sent for a bowl of china oranges, sweet lemons, and preserves. I put them on your account at the fruit shop. You blasted fool! <laughs> Mademoiselle, did you ever see a finer ring than the one my father wears on his finger? Oh, indeed, it is brilliant. You must see it closer, too. <coughs> oh, beautiful. It's full of fire. 
No, mademoiselle. It is in beautiful hands now. My father gives it to you as a present. I do? <laughs> Isn't it true, father, that you want this lady to keep it out of love for you? You must accept it. But I don't want to. No, you mustn't say that. He would never want to take it back. This is too much. It would be just... No, I insist. You see, he is horrified at your refusal. You rascal! You see how upset he is. You scoundrel! I am sorry, father, but it is not my fault. I am doing all that I can to make her keep it. But she is obstinate. You traitor! Madame, you are the cause for my father becoming angry with you. You villain! Uh, what a rumpus. Keep the ring since you wanted to. Well, I'll keep it for now, so you won't get angry. Some other time I'll give it back to you. No, tell the go away. Come back later. He says he has some money for you. Oh, money? Well, that's a good fellow in. <laughs> we will be better if we wait for the carriage here. There is no one around, and we can talk openly. My brother has told me of his love for you. I know the difficulties, and I assure you that you have all my sympathy. It's a sweet consolation to know I'm supported by someone like you. Your generous friendship will help soften the blows of fortune. How unfortunate that oh. you had not told me earlier about your problems. I would not have allowed things to go as far as I have. What can I say? It is my bad luck behind it all. Marianne, what have you decided to do? Perhaps in my dependence on others. Is there anything I can do but hope? Is there no help for me in your heart's safe hope? No secret pity? No kind sympathy? No evidence of affection? Tell me what I can do. I put myself in your hands, for I believe you would never ask of me anything that is not honorable and proper. But why do you limit me this way and keep me within the bounds of decency and honor? What would you have me do? Even if I could neglect the many scruples of my sex, I have regard for my mother. She has brought me up with great affection, and I just couldn't bring myself to talk to her. Please go to her and tell her the love you feel for me. And if you need me to, I'll tell her how I feel about you. Frazine, dear Frazine, will you help us? Of course. You know that underneath, I have a good heart. I like to help people there. What can we do? Try to think of something. If make some suggestion, find a way to destroy this deal you've made with my father. Oh, this is not easy. Your mother, you know, is not unreasonable. And we can perhaps persuade her to transfer to the son the dowry she intends on giving her father. The problem there is that your father <laughs> is your father. Yes, I know that. I mean, he will bear a grudge if he's refused, and then he'll be in no mood to consent to your marriage. We have to find something that's turning him against you, Marianne. You are right. Yes, I know that I am right. <laughs> but how in heaven's name can we find a way? Wait. If we have a woman, a fit elderly, who is willing to marry him to the point of giving him a fortune, I have no doubt that he would heed the proposition. He does love you, Marianne, but he loves money a little more. It's a very ingenious thought. Oh, let me take care of it. I just ran up with my friend who's just a person. If you succeed in that, Frazine, I will be I will show you my gratitude. But first, Marianne, let's go to your mother and try to win her over. It will be one step forward if we can avert that marriage. I beg you to make every effort possible. No one can resist your entreaties. I'll listen to everything you say and I'll do all I can. What's this? My son is kissing the hand of his stepmother to be? And his stepmother doesn't seem to object. Something going on here. The carriage is ready to take you to the fair. Father, since you aren't going with them, I will go. No, 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 you stay here. I need you. Besides the fact that she's your stepmother, what do you think of her? What I think of her? Yes, in her figure, appearance, her body. So-so, is that all? Frankly, Father, she is not what I expected. She seems like a flirt. She is not very beautiful, and her mind is, well, ordinary. I do not say this to discourage you. As far as stepmothers go, I just as soon have her as anyone. But just now you were telling her... Oh, a few compliments on your behalf. It was only to please you. <coughs> you don't have any fancy for yourself, do you? Me? Not in the least. Well, no, that's too bad. It cancels out a thought I had recently. I began thinking about my age and wondering if people would talk about me marrying such a young woman. In fact, I decided that I would have given her to you if you hadn't taken such a dislike to her. Given her to me? To you. In marriage? In marriage. Father.
Father, it is true she is not exactly what I would have chosen. But I am resolved to marry her to please you. No, no, I'm not as hard as you think. <laughs> <laughs> but Father, that is something that will come later. It is said that love often comes after marriage. No, if you had felt an inclination before, that would have been fine. I'll have to follow my first plan and marry her myself. Well, Father, since matters have reached this pass, I must tell you of our little secret. The truth is that I have loved Marianne since the first day I saw her out walking. I had planned on asking your permission to marry her, but when I learned of your feelings, I refrained through fear of displeasing you. You called on her? Yes. Often? Quite often, considering the time there has been. You well received? Very well. But she didn't know who I was. That was why she was so surprised just now. Did you tell her you loved her? Did she return your love? If I may judge from appearances, I think she does like me. Well, thank you for telling me this. It's just what I wanted to know. Now the auto has begun, you have stopped this club of yours. Forget paying attention to the woman I want to marry and marry the woman I pay to. And right away! So this is how you trick me. Well, since this is how matters stand, Father, I can tell you that I will not give up my love for Marianne. You rat. Are you bold enough to trespass on my territory? It is you who trespass on my territory. I was there first. I am your father. You owe me respect. This is not a matter over which a son must defer to his father. Love is no respecter of persons. My stick will teach you a lesson. Your threats are to no avail. You must give up your hand. Never! Gentlemen, gentlemen, what is this? What are you doing? I have lost all respect. Don't be easy, sir. Don't be you that incident. Oh, please, master. I will not give in. Not easy to your father. Let me take it. But he is your son. Master Jacques, I'll make you judge of the situation. You can prove that I am right. Well, stand off your I'm in love with the young girl who wants to marry her. This scoundrel has had the insolence to fall in love with her too and wants to marry her in spite of my orders. Well, he is wrong. Isn't it a shocking thing for a son to compete with his father? You are right. Let me speak to him and you stay over here. Well then, since he has made you judge, I entrust our quarrel to you, Master Jacques. I am honored, sir. I am in love with the young lady who returns my love and who tenderly accepts my promise of love. My father decides to upset this by proposing marriage to the same girl. Well, most certainly he is in the wrong. Isn't he ashamed to think of marriage at his age? He should leave that activity to young men. You are right. You can't really be. Let me speak to him. <laughs> Your son is not as difficult as you say. He will listen to reason, provided you show him more consideration and make arrangements, arrangements for him to marry someone he likes. Well, that's the way he feels. Tell him he's free to marry whoever he wants. The best of luck, but not marry Anne. Leave it to me. <coughs> your father is not as unreasonable as you say. He is annoyed only with your manner of behavior, and he is quite ready to grant you what you wish, provided you show him the respect and obedience which a son owes to his father. Well then, Master Jacques, you can tell him that if he gives me Marianne, I will be the most obedient of sons and do whatever he wishes. It's settled. He agrees to what you say. Fine, that's fine. Everything's settled. He's pleased with your promise. Thank heaven. Gentlemen. <laughs> Now you have to talk it over together. You are in complete agreement. You were about to have a quarrel because you did not understand one another. Master Jacques, I am eternally grateful to you. Don't mention it, sir. You've been very helpful, Master Jacques, and you deserve a reward. <laughs> I thank you, Master. <laughs> Father, I ask you to forgive my fit of anger. It is of no consequence. You are kind to forgive me so quickly. My father forgives his son when they remember their duty. Father, I promise that as long as I live, I will never forget your kindness. And I promise you over me whatever you want. Oh, I wish for nothing else. It is quite enough that you have given me Mary Ann. What? In giving me Mary Ann, you are goodness itself. Who said they were giving you Mary Ann? You did. I did? Yes. Who is you promised to give her up? Give her up? You have not given her up. On the contrary, I intend now more than ever to marry her. No, actually, you start it all over again. Nothing will make me change. I'll take care of you, you villain. I don't care what you do. I disinherit you. Good. I give you my curse. I do not need your gifts.
fine too. What's the matter? Oh, just follow me. What is it? Oh, it's your father's treasure. I stole it. How did you do it? Oh, I will tell you later, but I hear him coming. Quick, follow me. suckling pig your steward just sent me. <laughs> I want you to prepare him according to my own recipe. I'm not interested in that now. There's another matter to discuss with the gentleman. Don't be alarmed. Everything will proceed in good order according to the law. Is this gentleman in the supper party? Traitors and supper we're concerned with. What do you know about the money that's been taken from me? Someone has stolen your money? Yes, and if I find out you, I'll have you hanged. Now, now. Don't be hard on him. I can see by his face that he is an honest fellow, and that without putting him in prison, he will tell you what you need to know. Yes, my friend, his money was stolen from him today, and you probably know something about this. This is just the way for me to get back at that steward. He has been the favorite since he came into this house. Only he is listened to, and I am ignored. What are you muttering about? Let him alone. He is getting ready to give you satisfaction. I told you, he's an honest man. Master, if you really want me to tell you, I think it was your precious steward who did the deed. Valer? Yes. He always seemed to me so trustworthy. Uh, he's the one. I think it was he who stole from you. But did you see him poking around the area where I kept my money? Yes, I did. Where was your money? It was in the desk. That's exactly it. I saw him prowling about the desk. And, and what was the money in? It was in a money box. That's exactly it. I saw him with a money box. Well, yes, of course, but describe the box so we can tell. Well, it was 
It was a big, strong box. The one they stole from me was small. Well, yes, it was small, if you look at it that way. I call it big because of what was in it. What color was it? What color? Yes. Well, it was a sort of... Can't you help me describe it? What? Wasn't it gray? No. Red. That's right, a gray red. That's what I meant. Oh, there's no doubt about it now. It's the same one. Sir, right now. <laughs> Evans, who can I trust after this? After this, I believe I'm capable of stealing for myself. Master, here he comes. Whatever you do, at least don't say that I told you. Come here! Come and confess the darkest, the foulest crime ever committed! <laughs> What do you mean, sir? What do I mean? Don't you blush for your crime? What, what crime what? are you talking about? What crime am I talking about? Is it no? There's no use in trying to hide it. So, you made it to my kindness in order to ha enter my household and play a trick on me of this nature. Sir, since you've been told everything, I won't attempt any evasions or try to deny it. Oh? Oh? Did I guess the right man? <laughs> I intended to speak to you about this. I was simply waiting for a good opportunity. But since it has turned out this way, I beg you not to be angry and listen to what I have to say. What can you say for yourself, you rascal of a thief? Sir, I do not deserve such names. It is true that I have committed an offense against you. But after all, my fault is pardonable. Pardonable, you say? Such a dazzling trick, such a stab in the back. I fully intend you make amends for what you have taken from me. Your honor, sir, will be fully satisfied. There's no question of honor in this affair. But tell me, what led you to do such a thing? The god of love who, who pardons men for all he makes you do. Love? Yes. Fine love of my word. Not for my gold pieces. No, sir. I am not tempted by your wealth. That is not what dazzles me. I insist I do not covet your wealth. Provided you let me keep the treasure I already have. No, I will not! Not by all the demons in hell! I will not let you keep it! You were even in wanting to keep what you have taken, a treasure like that. A treasure that is true, and the most precious you have. But it will not be lost if it is given to me. You must grant me this! No! What are you talking about? We have swore to be faithful to each other, and swore never to be separated. You are certainly obsessed over my money. I have already told you, sir. I have not done what I have done for money. My heart and a more noble motive inspired me. Oh, so Christian charity made you want my money. But I will have satisfaction over you, you wretch. Oh, do as you wish. I'm ready to bear all the violence you demand. But I'm the only guilty one, and your daughter must not be blamed. Well, I should think not. It'd be very strange if my daughter were mixed up in such a crime. But I want restoration. You must tell me where the hiding place is. Why, there is no hiding place. We never left your house. Oh, my beloved money box. Never left the house, did you say? No. Tell me now, did you touch? Never! <laughs> you are wronging both of us. I am deeply in love, but honorably. In love with my money box. <laughs> I would never think of doing something so offensive to one so kind and modest. My money box is modest. <laughs> My desires were limited to the pleasures of looking at her. And nothing criminal ever dirty the beauty her love inspired in me. The beauty of my money box? One might think he's a lover talking about his mistress. The damn clothes of witness to our engagement. And when she learned of the honorable intentions of my love, she helped persuade your daughter to give me her consent and accept mine. Is it the fear of the law that is making him rave? Why are you mixing up my daughter and all this? I'm saying, sir, that I've had the greatest difficulty in making her consent to my love. Whose consent? Your daughter's. Not until yesterday did she and I sign a promise of marriage. My daughter signed a marriage contract. Yes, sir, and I signed one, too. Oh, heavens, another disaster! Write that down, sir, write it down. Oh, one trouble after another, misfortune or misfortune. Come, sir, carry your duty. Indict him as a thief and a seducer. As a thief and a seducer, I've done nothing to deserve such names. Oh, when you've learned who I am. Wretched girl, unworthy daughter of your father. Is this the way you carry out the precepts I taught you? So, you fall in love with an infamous thief and give him your promise before mine. You both will learn you had made a great mistake. I'll keep you within four walls now, and the gallows will take care of your impudence. Oh, we will not be judged by your anger. I will be heard before being condemned. I was wrong when I said gallows. You will be broken on the wheel. Oh, Father, I beg you, be more merciful. Do not be overcome by your anger. Do not use the heavy hand of a father's authority. Consider the man who has offended you. He is not the same as the man you are judging. 
You will see why I accepted him when you learn that without him I would have lost my life. Yes, Father, Belair is the man who saved me from drowning at sea. You owe him the life of your daughter. No, no, no. It would have been better for him to have let you drown than do what he has done. Oh, Father, I beg you for the love that you have for your daughter. No, no, I want to hear no more. Let justice take its course. You will pay for being so sneaky and arrogant to me. What is it, Lord Harpagon? I see you're upset. Oh, Lord Anselm, of all men, I am the most unlucky. There is much trouble over this marriage contract you've come to sign. My honor's been attacked and my fortune pillaged. And here's a liar and a thief. He came into my house under the title of a servant in order to steal my money and seduce my daughter, your fiance. Who cares about this money you're always referring to? Yes, yes, yes. They're engaged to be married. This insult concerns you, Lord Anselm. And you, at your own expense, of course, should get amends for what he has done and get back with him. Well, I do not intend to force anyone to marry me or to claim a heart that is promised to someone else. But as concerns your interests, I am ready to support them as if they were my own. This officer, I've been told, will carry out all the functions of his office. Charge me, sir. You make the charges criminal. Oh, I don't see how you can make a crime out of the love I have for your daughter and the punishment to which you think I can be condemned because of our engagement. Oh, when you've learned who I am. Oh, I'm not interested in that. Today's society is full of imposters. People claim they are nobles and decorate themselves with the first illustrious name that comes into their heads. Sir, I would never think of claiming anything that does not belong to me. Anyone in Naples will testify to my family. Be careful, you are speaking to a man who knows Naples very well. And I will easily see through whatever story you tell. I'm not afraid. If you know Naples, then you knew Don Thomas Della Bursi was. I do. I do indeed. You knew him better than I did. I don't give a rap for Don Thomas or Don Martin. Please, let him speak. We'll see what he has to say. Well, I have to say is well, that he was my father. Your father? Yes. Come now, you're joking. You're not know, save yourself to this lying. It is not a lie. What I'm saying here, I can prove. What? You dare pretend to be the son of Don Thomas Del Percy? Yes, I did this, and I'm ready to prove this truth. But what proof beyond your own word can you give that it's not a story built upon a basis of truth? The Spanish ring which belonged to my father. The Spanish captain who saved me from the wreck. Pedro, the servant who escaped with me from the shipwreck. He's telling the truth. I realize now you're my brother. You, you are my sister? Yes. My heart moved as soon as you began to speak. Our mother, who will be overjoyed, has told me a hundred times about the misfortunes of our family. Heaven didn't allow us to perish in that shipwreck, but our own lives were saved at the cost of our freedom. Pirates rescued us from a piece of wreckage, and after ten years of slavery, only a stroke of good fortune set us free. We returned to Naples, only to find that all our possessions had been sold, and there was no news of our father. So we went to Genoa, where Mother tried to gather the scattered remnants of her inheritance. And then, fleeing the resentment of her family, we came here. But ever since, she's been sick and unhappy. Oh, Lord, how wondrously you manifest the power. How true it is that all miracles come from you. My children, I embrace you. Come mingle your joy with mine. You, you are our father? <laughs> yes, my children. I am Don Thomas Del Bercy. And I was saved from the sea of all the money I had with me. For 16 years I believed you dead. But now, I've been able to sell what I had. And I had settled down under the name of Anselm. And I tried to forget the misfortunes of which my real name had brought upon me. Is this your son? Yes. I owe him responsible for the 10,000 francs he stole from me. He stole from you? Yes. Who told you this? Master Jacques! <laughs> Did you say this? You know I said nothing of the sort. Officer wrote down his entire testimonial. Do you think me capable of such a deed? Capable or incapable? I want my money back! Stop being worried, Father, and don't accuse anyone. I have come with news of your money, and to tell you that if you consent to let me marry Marianne, then your money will be returned to you. Where is it? It is in a safe place, and there is no need for worry. Now it is up, for, up to you to tell me what you decide. Either let me marry Marianne or lose your money box forever. Has anything been taken from it? No, nothing. Is it your intention to allow this wedding and add your consent to the consent of her mother's who has left her free to choose between us? But wait, there's something you don't know. Heaven's given me back a brother and a father and you need their consent now. My children, I have not come back into your lives to ruin your dream. Lord Harpagon, you must realize that such a young girl will choose the son rather than the father. Come now, don't force us to tell you what you have no need to hear. Give your consent with mine to this double marriage. 
I will make up my mind when I see my money box. You will find it intact. I have no money to give to the marriages of my children. Well, I have enough for them. Now, we must give over to the happiness of this day. Are you saying that you have enough for this double marriage? Yes, I give my word. Don't be concerned about this. Stop, gentlemen. Please stop. Who will pay for my depositions? We have no need for your depositions. Well, I don't intend to have done them for nothing. For payment? I give you this fellow. We can get hanged. What is a man to do, I ask you? I'm given a beating when I tell the truth, and they want to hang me when I lie? Lord Harper gone, we must forgive his deceit. So you are willing to pay the officer? Yes. Now, we must go tell your mother the joyous news. And we must go see my money box. <laughs> Like a tour? Bye. 